Welcome to my abode. If there's one thing I am so surprised about with Genshin, at least in terms of how addicted I've become to it, it is the teapot. And I feel like that addiction isn't as widespread as I thought it'd be. There's a lot of folks that I know, friends and otherwise, that haven't really dove into the teapot and maxed it out and gotten your full rate for accumulating realm currency and friendship bounties and all that fun stuff. So I'm going to give a tour of my place. Right now I'm at 37k energy, which is about as high as it can get really without like super min maxing things and not going for aesthetics. So we're going to start things off by looking at the inside of my house and then we'll go sort of section by section each of the four islands of my realm and show off the tour of the outside as well. But before we do all that, let's look at the inside. Right out the gate, uh, I do want to put a disclaimer. I This is the very first thing that I started decorating and I definitely yoinked it from Google Images. Literally want Genshin Impact. Uh, teapot inside house <laughs> and it was like in the first page so if I can try to find who the original boy was that made this I will definitely do so and link them down in the description if they have a channel or uh, a Twitter or whatever but uh, yeah we got a little hearth area a little like lounge area over here on the left we got a little mini office I wouldn't call this the main office area but a little like receptionist area with a Yaka's ornament oh bless her heart that cutscene was so fucking cute, man. Oh, sorry. Pardon the language. My bad. But anyway, this has a sort of study vibe to it, right? We've got a bunch of books kind of piled around everywhere. We got the bookshelves, which really the, the true secret to the teapot, right? The, the real min-maxing with the teapot is just finding unique ways to subtly shift around bookcases in slightly different ways to make them look different than they really are, because we only have like five of them. God, please give us more. Behind here, I really like using this bookshelf as a way to kind of section off this area, give a backdrop for uh, for this part, while also acting as an ornament for the bar that we have over here. Imagine it, little Diona, little D Luke behind the bar. Yeah, screw that. Give me Charles. That's who I want. I have the screens here just to block off the staircases. Originally, I was thinking I could uh, I could maybe use one of these shelf things. But turns out that these aren't double-sided. You, you don't have the shelves on the other side, it's just flat. So if you try to use them on this side, they fit in perfectly over here, but if you try to put them there, then it's totally off and it doesn't look right. And that's one of my big wishes, man. I hope we get the ability to transform objects and flip them horizontally. I, I just feel like that's gonna open up so many options for us. But for the time being, this is our mating press chambers. Hey, baby girl, looking, f looking fly as always. How you doing, Coca Go? Mmm. Ooh, that height difference, though. Ooh. Ooh, I'll get smoochy right up. Maybe I will. Leeway's best secretary in the house. Gotta give her her own little private study. You know, while I do my own private study. Over here, this is meant to be Ningguang's chambers. Uh, normally it is, but right now I'm trying to really grind up the uh, companionship experience for the boys that I actually use. Right now, Ning Shang Ling's at like nine, so I really want to top her off, but uh, normally this is Ningguang, and I kind of have this whole, you know, yellow, gold, brown sort of vibe to her. Kind of like using the screen to, to kind of make the room shape seem a little different, even though it's obviously not. I feel like it looks a little different, so I appreciate that. Over here, we have a little mini dining area. I might substitute the dark wood stuff for this in a future stroke of inspiration. <laughs> that's, that's such a lame way to say that. Uh, but for the timing, it's a little bit different, so I kind of like it. Some decorations on the walls and whatnot, but over here we have the main kitchen. I really love how the kitchen turned out. I think it's super cozy. I feel like if you're not using this floor specifically with the diamond uh, pattern for your kitchen, I feel like you're doing it a disservice. And that is the bottom floor. So let's go ahead. Let's move on up to the top. We have some decorations over on the walls. Over here, I actually yoinked this from Chinsei Village. You know the big pavilion hut thing where the really sad grandma is? And you run past, then there's like the the uh, the artifacts with the two sparkly points right there. Uh, that's this table. Only difference is Chinsei Village has two mini tables on either side with plants on top of those. And man, if we could get the ability to scale furniture up and down by a certain amount, maybe make them 50% smaller and larger. Oh my God, dude, that would open up so many opportunities to make really, really cool layouts. So again, one of those big wish list things. I think it could be fun maybe to compile a wish list of sorts, but either way, we have the main office area. Normally this is where Gene is, but for the time being, I, could just, I gotta look up this hot thing. 
for anyone not aware, I'm the world's biggest child simp. He's my husband, and I want him to hold me in his strong arms. God, what a dreamboat. Uh, anyway, though, yeah, I, this is very symmetrical. I try not to be, like, too symmetrical with rooms, but I feel like for the orderly, you know, Gene room, the big Favonius office, I kind of liked uh, making it a little bit more orderly, using the bookshelves in a kind of angled way just to kind of offset the room shape a little bit. Again, just to kind of mix it up. I think if you can make the rooms, even the identical ones in the Leeway Mansion, look a little different, I feel like that goes a long way with their, like, layout and stuff. Over here, we have the goons. Again, most of the boys that are out here are actually boys that are part of my main squad that I'm trying to get their name cards for. So, over here, we have the harp corner. I really love the idea, right, of having a music corner up here in the balcony. We have the guests and stuff over for the enormous house parties that totally exist. I'm not super lonely and sad and decrepit, uh, but they're like roaming around the bottom. And then you can hear the harp player from the from the top. We have some stools for uh, big photo shoot opportunities and whatnot. Ah. Oh. Venti in there, bada boom, bada bing. You got yourself a Twitter post right there. More goons, how's it shaking, ladies? How's it shaking, ladies? I say again. Uh, I really love this is sort of the laboratory. And normally this is where Lisa hangs out, which, you know, hourglass. I'm gonna sob in a couple patches, I swear to God. Uh, we have a little alchemy corner. I really like how these screen sections off, and uh, the way these bookshelves fit in was really nice, and how they're more or less lined up with this Mondstadt rug. I guess it's not perfect, but uh, it's pretty good. I like it a lot. I actually wanted to have uh, the different shelves. Here, this is actually the final room, so I can show the overview now. Uh, and what I wanted were the... Uh, where are they? I wanted this this thing. But even if I take the fruit stall out, it's still... My load is still exceeded. It's crazy. Oh, wrestling with the load. In the teapot is definitely the biggest hurdle, but man, if you can overcome it, I think you can still make some really cool things. Oh, right. So let's go ahead. Uh, once we go through things on foot, then I am going to show the overview real quick. Like again, just to kind of give an idea of how everything's kind of laid out and organized. So here is the top floor. I really hope too we get more uh, wall decorations. I love the Favonius crest. I love these paintings. Uh, I just wish we had more of them. There's so many cool wall scrolls, especially in the Leeway buildings. Uh, that we just don't have access to yet, so I hope they get added in soon, at some point at least. So there's the laboratory, here is the big Favonius office. I'm surprised by how much I really love these rally flags. I feel like in the right rooms, especially paired with the right bookshelves, especially this really big chonker, man. They just look so cool. I love them a lot, honestly. Here's the ground floor. Still really like how the bar area turned out. Okay, so here's Ganyu's bedroom. Very cozy. I, if you ever just need very easy decorations to, spru uh, to spruce up a living space, definitely the plants. These boys and then the bigger boy. This boy. I think they go such a long way. And then even the smaller ones, right? The, the flower pots. Little vases. Uh, I, I love them a lot. I, I put them everywhere. Because also, I don't think they take up that much load either. I'd love to see how much load every object takes up. Get a definitive list. Or hey, even better, yo, mihoyo, just show us how much load we have available and how much is left and how much each item takes up. Bada boom, bada bing. It makes planning things so much easier. But anyway, that was the inside of the mansion. My other big hot tip is if you want to max out your uh, teapot as soon as possible to get as much realm currency as possible, Definitely prioritize maxing out your mansion first before doing your outside. So get all the blueprints for the inside furnishings, make a million bookshelves, stick them in as many orifices as you can possibly put them in. Because right now my mansion literally has about 18k energy. Literally the mansion alone is enough to almost max out the realm on its own, let alone all the other uh, islands and stuff. So that's definitely should be priority numero uno. Again, if you're just trying to min-max, Get yourself unlocked as uh, soon as possible. But either way, this is my outdoor courtyard area. I really love the central pavilion. Uh, the courtyard walls and especially these walkways in the central pavilion. What would, what would you call this? Bodega? That's not the word for it. Eh, you know what I mean, though. I, I love this thing. This is such a great centerpiece, really for any layout. Uh, I don't think it even has to be like a leeway-centric build. For any sort of park area, th this thing just looks amazing. Got some benches on the other side. 
Very nice. Again, I'm always in my mind like, man, how many cool little photo ops can I make out of my teapot? Because that's really the end game here, right? As soon as we get more like fashion and stuff, that's really going to be the goal here. But uh, it's actually very barren. I have a couple of these tea benches over here on this side. Unfortunately, nothing on this side aside from a couple trees because my load is maxed. Uh, the unfortunate truth is, let's show the overview. These courtyard walls, while well, they're looking really cool, and especially if you can get a layout where... Uh, uh, where you can basically fully enclose an area. I, I do think the effect is really cool, but the trade-off is that they take up so much load. And for this realm specifically, or I should say this uh, sub-area of this realm, you don't get much leeway. So if I wanted to, I could probably push this house, right? Like extend it up and then get rid of a lot of the walls. That would probably give me some room to do more interesting things here on the outside. Uh, but I kind of wanted it to be a little asymmetrical. Again, I, I tried to not keep things too symmetrical because I feel like that's kind of boring, right? It's like eating food. I want it to be uh, heterogeneic, not homogeneic. I'm trying to channel my inner Adam Ragusea. I think from the inside, it's very pretty. And that should be the main goal too. I think what you should do when you're making and organizing your, uh, your teapot realms is pick one to two vantage points. So usually that's like the entrances and exits of the sub areas and then maybe like the center points, right? So maybe like three different points and just try to build everything around those points so that no matter where you look, it just looks interesting. So even though the outside of here is pretty barren, from the inside, uh, I think it looks really pretty. When you take that approach to where you only try to prioritize everything looking great from a couple points, then you can get away with some shortcuts and dealing with your load requirements. So like for this courtyard wall that's behind the, the house, <laughs> it looks like the wall is going all the way around, right? From that side behind the house to this side. But then if you actually look behind the house, you'll see that it is not lined up at all. And that's because I was really struggling to try to get this house and like these fences to line up and go through and then I ended up, I had to like curve these around it doesn't look perfect so I had to use like that bush to cover up the little gap in the wall and stuff right so it's totally out of line and it's actually very easy to walk in between the wall and this gap here but the beauty of it is if you take the approach where you're trying to just look at it from this like focal point of the central pavilion right when you're just looking at it dead on it just looks like it's part of the rest of the walls and stuff so I think that's a really good strategy to organize your stuff and kind of to loose. just keep on top of what you actually want to accomplish with your areas. And without further ado, that is one complete. Let's go ahead and move on to the second little preview of it up there. All right. So next up, we have our Mondstadt Villa. It's very nice. I love seeing the windmill off in the background. We have the central street here, a bunch of shops and buildings on either side, lampposts scattered throughout. We have a little like smithy area that kind of extends to the back as you see as we go around the corner on the left hand side. We have this really fancy farmhouse, bougie fruit veggie stall with a bunch of flower pots and stuff. This man, whoever he is with his pet boar and crane, <laughs> just really loves to upkeep and uh, plant lots of plants and whatnot. Uh, really like the uh, vibes there. We got a little well in the back. The grapevines, which I love that you can walk uh, underneath those, they're uh, so cool. I did block off that one side with more grapevines and stuff, no but that's beside the point. I love these things. These things are so cool. A little wheelbarrow. I don't love how tall this gate is. Honestly, I, again, I wish we could shrink furniture by like 50% or so. Kind of scale it up and down. Because uh, I think if I could scale this down, and actually even these fences by 50% and have more of them, and just have them a little bit shorter, I feel like that would fit this aesthetic a little bit more, but... Either way, I still think, uh, I, I think I like it overall. We have a little mini park plaza. I don't know if you could even really call this a plaza, but a little mini bench area sitting in front of what who I have deemed the carpenter of the realm. I like to make up little headcanons and little stories for each of the like sub areas in the sub areas. So a little carpenter, he's got a shit like tool shed and a little tool bench back here. Some piles of wood crafting up down the wooden pickaxe. Son, going to find some diamonds, perhaps. Over here, we have the schlop who's overseeing the windmill, which the tree's blocking, the windmill <laughs> up on this landform. Uh, because here's my thing. Here is my design philosophy with my areas. And honestly, the, the design philosophy that I think Mihoyo themselves do when they're planning out their cities. Um, I, before we get into that uh, last final area, just 
some more benches, really, really great view of the actual sunset. Unfortunately, while I love this realm to pieces, I think it's so pretty, and especially I love that cloud sea. Straight out of Xenoblade 2, you know? It's so breathtaking. There's no day and night cycle though, which is kind of unfortunate. Like the leeway buildings and stuff look amazing at nighttime. But, you know, if the trade-off is that we get to get this gorgeous sunset 24-7, I don't think it's too bad. Plus, hey, we get, we get to use the other realms too, so. It's not like we really miss out on stuff, right? But my big design philosophy is I always want to build up. Again, I want to pick a, like one or two focal points, and then I want to build everything around there so that no matter where you look, there's something interesting to see. Now, this area was like just the beginning of me trying to come around to that idea, so really only the windmill is the bulk of it because it's kind of like more of a crowded city alley than it is uh, uh, like a big sprawling sort of area. But without that landform, this windmill barely peeks over the top of the buildings. Like you can just barely see the, uh, the tops of the windmill blades. And I feel like that doesn't really help with the skyline a whole lot. If you look at Mondstadt or Liyue, right? You'll notice that both of those cities are built on hills. And that's so good because it lets you really see a lot Actually, I would even say most of the interesting landmarks and locations within the cities from a moment's notice, again, at least if you're looking from the entrances of, of either of them, really. It's really laid out like an amusement park in both cases, and you can even say that kind of extends to their map design as a whole uh, throughout the game. So it's something that, especially for the last two areas, I really tried to adopt, and honestly, I'm really happy with how it turned out. Uh, but yeah, that is my, uh, my layout for the Monsat Villa. Very crowded, and I actually really struggled to hit the load limit. I had to put in a whole bunch of goods. It's almost to the point of being a little crowded, and so I might do a little bit of tweaking here and there. I'm not totally sure how I want to go about it yet, but uh, but no, overall, I'm really happy. This was actually the very first area that I felt like very satisfied with it coming to fruition, and honestly, the key is because this area is small. That's another big recommendation I have. Whenever you get the chance, especially for the big maps like the beach map, uh, the more you can limit space and condense things down so that you can really have like things in closer proximity, I think the more interesting and uh, dynamic the landscapes can be. Empty space does go a long way, and it can be very useful, but I think too much of it, and it, it looks like underdeveloped, right? So I think this island specifically, the second one on the whatever the sunset realm is, I think this is the best island because it's tiny. And that gives you the most room to really like condense things down and completely fill it in without exceeding your load limit. And that, it t at least to me, is so valuable. But anyway, let's go ahead. I'll meet you at the third area. And we are arriving. So you can see right off the, right at a glance, we have some hilly trail watchtowers, lots of bamboo, right? You kind of look through this hilly trail gate that's overseen by these almost valley-esque cliffs. Uh, you can see another hilly trail house, some more watchtowers. But you go through, it opens up, and then we have lamps leading to a nice little country home. And it also happens to be my farming abode. Anything in season? Nope, not even close. Still have not done the quest in order to make my own seeds. I've been buying them from Tubby like an absolute delinquent. But I will say, for as much as I'm not like the biggest fan of how these plots look, I actually love the water plants. They look like just really cool decorative ponds, you know, toss some koi in them and I actually think they look really nice. But yeah, this is sort of like the main farm area. In the back we have a lot more grapevines and all that fun yeah. stuff. Just kind of stacked, uh, made to look pretty. And you'll notice the entire area is no, surrounded by cliffs overseen by a bunch of hilly trill stuff. My headcanon for this area is that we have a farmer here, a nice gent who uh, makes a lot of a lot of goodies and shares them with the hilly trill boys and lives kind of coexisting with them is maybe what I should say, right? They have a mutually beneficial relationship. The boy makes a surplus of food and shares them with his hilly trill friends. The hilly trills look over him and, and help protect him from bandits and the uh, leeway chefs who want to I don't know, stuff slime down is going. <laughs> I don't know, either way. You know, you know what this is? This is the canon home of Ella Musk. That hussy. I should maybe that I should say that husky. Unfortunately, I don't love how open this big path is. 
But the sad truth is that the farming stuff takes up so much load uh, to the point where this literally I'm are, are still capped. Uh, and there was so much more. I, I have so many more hilly trail houses and bamboo that I wanted to spread around, even have some like hilly trail stuff here in the main path as well. And I'm just not able to, unfortunately, I want to put more decorations and stuff up on the cliff faces themselves as opposed to just the houses. I got a couple of the archery things and a couple of the hilly trail pots at least. So it's not completely barren, but uh, I... This island is the biggest one for this realm, and uh, that's the biggest issue, man. These big ones do not have nearly enough load to compensate for how large they are. So especially for these large islands, I think it definitely benefits you to use the landforms and to kind of block stuff off. Even like if I wanted to, it would probably benefit me to like take all of this left side and just push it more to the right. Really narrow that path down, make it a lot tighter and more concise. Uh, and I might even do that off screen now that I'm saying this <laughs> verbally out loud. Uh, but at least, you know, for the time being, I just really like the head cannon that I built up here. And, uh, you know, functionally, it still works out really nicely, I think. So with all that, we have one last area. And personally, it is my favorite of the bunch. So I will meet you over there. And we are fast approaching our last stop for the evening. Right at a glance, you can see some leeway houses, some of those glowy rocks, which look really nice. And my favorite part, honestly, I mean, I think there's a lot of cool stuff going on. Uh, but what I wanted to do with this area is I wanted to have a sort of Tory gate effect, right? You're, unfortunately, we can't terraform the path to actually go up, which is why my like, I want that so badly, right? But we had this series of gates kind of uh, blocked off on both sides by these very tall cliff faces. Again, more of those uh, cool Zhuiyun karst rocks. You go through, you get the Xenoblade effect where it's closed off, it opens up, and ah, nice open area. Little fountain plaza, sort of leeway residential district. It's so cozy. Got a lot of landscaping, the trees and the fencing. I actually wanted even more for uh, like this house and that house over there, but I am out of load. But honestly, I think that's fine because you look around everywhere you look, there's a whole bunch of houses and even more of those rocks and stuff. And even though the overall space to run around in is pretty small, you know, it's really just this ring around the fountain. Uh, I feel like I feel like looking out, it's so dense with stuff to look out. Uh, to look at, sorry, uh, out in the background that it more than makes up for it. Also, yeah, we have our, our street vendor <laughs> abode over here. Honestly, if I did have the load for it, I would definitely just put Shangling over here. But here's the overview. Again, not a lot of room to run around in, but very, very dense with different buildings and rocks and trees dotted around. Uh, you'll see my, my central focus was uh, two spots, right? As you're coming through the gate, being able to look back and uh, see stuff uh, gradually getting higher and higher up so you can see it over uh, the other stuff. And then also from uh, sitting from either of the benches. So again, as you go further and further out, it's almost like a bowl, right? Everything gets put higher and higher up. And I didn't want it to be perfectly uh, like higher up. I wanted there to be a little bit of deviations so like this greenhouse is a lot taller than like this blue one which is uh shorter than this one right so i didn't want it to be uniform but generally speaking the further away stuff is in the background the higher up it is uh but yeah that is my last and final area definitely the one i'm the most proud of the one i would want to live in honestly all right last but not least is the actual energy breakdown again like i was saying my house is almost exactly at 18k First island, 55k. Second island, 49k. Third island, 38k. The load is so tiny on that, but also the, the farming stuff really does take up so much room. Which is crazy because they're just tiny squares, man. Shouldn't be that big of a deal. I'm just saying. And the fourth island, 48k. So again, if you want to max out your realm as soon as possible, you want to hit that 20k, get your 30 uh, currency an hour, which really does help so much with speeding up the process, maxing out your rank and all that. Definitely focus on filling out your mansion as much as you can. Bookshelves are super dope. The screens are really handy because they uh, all, all of them really don't take up that much load uh, to begin with. And, you know, they're worth 90 per pop. So uh, those are really good. 
Uh, and then just kind of, you know, fill out your outside to, to hit the rest of the 20 cap. It really doesn't take too long uh, on my free-to-play account. I'm about a month in, and I've had my, my pot for 11 days now. And I have hit 11k Adeptal Energy. So I fully expect in two weeks, if that, uh, I think I'll definitely have enough blueprints and stuff in order to hit that 20k. Uh, so if you haven't already... Definitely no excuse to not have it capped and good to go. You get so many goodies from it, man. Uh, once you're actually done building stuff, you know, in case anybody hasn't actually been able to see how much stuff you can buy from it. You know, you can get a resin a week. You can get a 100k artifact experience a week, which in the grand scheme of things isn't a ton. But, you know, that's enough to get one five star up to what, like level 15, level 16 for free. Super hype. You can get 200k Mora a week. Uh, granted, you basically have to pick like one of these rewards. You can't really get them all per week, you know, but you can pick like one or two and just get them for free, which is so good, man. It's so good. 40 Mystic Ores, 20 Heroes Wits a week. And you know how much resin that's worth alone? I, I don't actually. I don't, I don't really do use the ley lines. So uh, somebody tell me how much that's worth. <laughs> Either way, you know, half the fun is just being able to share your designs with friends, which honestly is why I'm making this to begin with. This is quite literally my first video on this channel. So if this helps inspire you to, you know, pick up some designs, you know, and finally complete your teapot, which by the way, please, for the love of God, if you like anything, like just yoink it, just steal it. Who cares? I don't. That's the fun in it. So if you guys did learn anything or just are feeling more inspired to pick your pot back up and finally complete it, hitting the video with a like definitely does help me out a lot. I'm literally just starting out. So any subscribers too, definitely, you know, goes a long way. Imagine being the first. Imagine. Be kind of pog, I think at least. But either way, thank you so much for watching. Next teapot video, I'm going to take one of my realms and do a time lapse from start to finish from scrap, filling it out and hitting the load limit for every single room and sub area of that realm. I also have a lot more Genshin content planned too that doesn't just involve me talking about plants and putting windmills on big rock. So there's a lot to look forward to and I can't wait to share it all with you. Until then, have a good one.